contexts as environments change, as um, contexts as environments change, as um, those variables switch around, switch around, you would like students hopefully to be thinking different ways. Um, for action and with action is really kind of more of a purposeful um, distinction or thinking about future planning um, is, the, is the, uh, the difference there. This is another big thing, and I know people who have been at my sessions before, this is a, a big point. We make assumptions that everyone just knows how to reflect. Um, just go reflect, take that quiet moment, think about things, and then you'll automatically make those great connections. We're really not true. Um, I was say that. Yeah, I was going to say that. I thought it was on this slide. The three years. Uh, there's there's some interesting research out there. Uh, I think it's uh, Ash and her colleagues talking about it. It takes some time for university students in general, up to three years, to develop uh, reflective skills as a metacognitive skill. Um, and I think it maybe even takes longer than that um, to do well. Um, there's also like most teaching and learning and pedagogy, uh, the instructor's experience and background certainly plays a role in how reflection is shaped and what the expectations are. And I think we need to be aware of that as well. Uh, otherwise, we won't be able to help students make those connections um, and really put that dash in between service and learning or experience and learning. So the trap, right? Depending on the sophistication of the students who we're working with, we rush them to think about these, like, give me this, you know, golden nugget of your best reflective experience ever, and I want that now in this assignment. Chances are that in university when we ask them to reflect, it may be the first time we've ever asked them to reflect in this way. Um, that was my expectation when I started. I wanted to see these, you know, these mind-blowing statements like this was the best experience ever and this is how it relates to every theory that we ever talked about in class and this is how I'm going to use it down the road and that just, that wasn't happening, right? So we took a step back and this is kind of coming out of some coaching literature which is actually kind of interesting. Um, so people like beginners, so they're new to things. They're be either beginning, or beginners to a, a an area of inquiry or they're beginning reflectors, they're basically, they want to know the rules. They want to know how things work. And for me in, in recreation and leisure studies, I, I like to think about this in terms of if I'm going to learn a new recreation activity, like I'm going to go out and learn, learn bowling. Like what, what's the first thing I need to know? Well, what are the rules around that? That's basically all I can understand um, around that situation. Um, and that's the same thing with reflection. So I like to try and help students understand uh, with a new scenario or a new reflective practice, here's some basic steps that you can follow um, to think about reflecting, or here's some basic steps in your placement with iEquip that you might experience so that you can understand those things and then be able to think about them in a better way. So in terms of intermediates, we're starting to get to those A plus B equals C types of sequences. They're starting to relate rules together, that type of thing. Uh, in terms of reflection, we're talking about making connections. So they're able to take idea A and idea B, it's that A, B, and C sequence again, and combine them together or synthesize them into something new. Um, or to maybe make that jump from this is what I saw in my placement or my internship or my service learning experience, and this is now what I'm thinking about in, in class or this theory or this concept that we were talking about. And then finally with, uh, Experts, and this is where I, ex you know, expected people to be uh, when I first started, is that they're basically taking in and learning um, more than they're forgetting things. That it's a seamless integration of new knowledge, skills, and dispositions, and um, that can happen with reflection. But I think it takes time um, and practice and some training to get there, because uh, it doesn't happen just automatically. So how can we do this? Um, first of all, we can teach reflection, and I think this is one of those things, again, as an instructor, I certainly is like, I don't need to teach this, people just know how to do that. Um, and there's lots of different ways to teach reflection and lots of different tools available to do that. Um, just like any other assignment that we design, we have to think about ways of going around ref uh, designing those, those assignments and what our outcomes and expectations are. Um, 
again, it relates back to the student and what their level of sophistication is and what your overall goals and objectives for the course are. But uh, being very careful about assignment design, I think, is an important thing to think about. Assessment is a big issue. Um, oftentimes, depending on the experience, people will be, you know, sharing some really deeply emotional things, you know, gut reactions to things they've never experienced before. Can you assign a mark to that? Is that okay? That's a question you have to ask. In some situations, it might be. In some, it might not be. Um, your own history and the student's history and the history of the program, I think, are also uh, something to think about. And in terms of framing those expectations for students, uh, can certainly help reflective be more, or reflection be more, um, have more positive outcomes. And then trust as well. Uh, it's hard, like I said, to have this experience and then feel like I have to pour my guts out into a journal or an assignment and then have, like, oh, here's this instructor who's up at the front of the class and they're going to read this. And what, what, what are they going to think of me? Um, and also the fact that they may be telling you some things that may raise some ethical issues about what they saw or how they're feeling about things or some of their own personal uh, practices. So you have to be aware of, of some of those um, traps as well. So what does it all mean? To me, it kind of comes back to the beginning. I think uh, in terms of service learning and experiential learning with a little dash maybe being a reflection, I think we need to take a step back and think about how we're going to frame those things in order for them to be really effective and make that service learning and make experience learning. Thank you.